Hi and welcome back to our channel. I'm Jennifer and this is Kate and today we're celebrating the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. So happy feast day! And as it turns out, my saint for 2022 is Saint John the Baptist. So we're very excited to celebrate this feast day where he was such a major player. And the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord is such a cool event in so many ways. So today we wanted to share with you five things that we really love about this feast day. We also have a couple of fun facts about the feast day to share with you and a couple of easy ways that you can celebrate it at home. So let's get started. All right, first off the bat, I want to say a disclaimer. I am not a theologian. Kate is not a Bible scholar. So we're just giving you five different things that we like about the baptism of Jesus. And the first thing is that it gives us such an intimate glimpse of Jesus and John together. So they're cousins and they're reunited. And what's the first thing they do? They start squabbling, right? You baptize me. No, you should baptize me. No, really, baptize me. So I just think that's a really cool look at the humanity of Jesus. Yes, he's fully God, but he's also fully human. So human, in fact that he can have a fight with his cousin in front of a large group of people. And the second thing that we find really neat is how this event mirrors the meeting of Mary and Elizabeth before the boys were born. At the visitation, Elizabeth was so humble. She said, who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And then at the baptism, John is asking the same thing. Who am I to baptize you? So you see that humility present both times. And the third thing that I really love about the baptism of Jesus is that it really gets the Jesus show on the road. It's a launch party, right? And with any type of launch party, it's always good if you have celebrities there. And this story has celebrities. We have John the Baptist. We have Jesus. We have God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. And we also have two future apostles of Jesus there. We have Andrew, who was originally a disciple of John. And then we also have another disciple who is unnamed, but most scholars do agree that it was most likely John the apostle who was there with Andrew. So we have a celebrity cast assembled and the show is about to get going. Jesus's public ministry is about to start. The fourth thing that we really love is how John did the right thing in this moment. He was very popular in his own right. He had a lot of disciples. The people greatly admired him, and even King Herod liked to round him up to talk with him. And with the people anxiously awaiting a Messiah, it would have been very easy for John to say, here I am, let's go, let's change things. But he didn't. He followed his mission and he stepped back and let Jesus take the wheel. Yeah, I think that we don't realize sometimes how huge John the Baptist really was. I've read that he was like the Billy Graham of his day. He had hundreds and thousands of followers, and yet he still stayed true to his mission. He did not try to take the glory for himself. So I think this is a good day that we can step back also and think about what is my earthly mission? What is it that God really wants me to do? And finally, the fifth thing that we really love is that this event was so epic that it was recorded in all four Gospels. Not many other stories, not even the Nativity, ended up in all four. So this obviously had a huge impact on everybody who saw it. I think anytime the skies part and you hear the voice of God coming down, you're likely to remember that and make sure that everyone else knows about it too. So there are many, many deep, interesting, amazing things about the baptism of Jesus that we could share with you, but we're going to stop here because we want to move on now to a few fun facts about the baptism. The first fact is that the baptism of the Lord always falls on the first Sunday after Epiphany, except in rare occasions when it can fall on the first Monday after Epiphany. And ordinary time also starts on the day after the baptism of the Lord every year. And the second fun fact is that although we think of Epiphany as the end of the Christmas season, because that's the end of the 12 days of Christmas, in reality, the true end of the Christmas season is the feast of the baptism of the Lord. Although in the past, the Christmas season went on even longer, all the way up to Candlemas on February 2nd. So I'm just saying, if you still have your tree up now, which we do, you're good. So how can you celebrate this feast at home? 
Well, one of the things that you can do today is to reminisce about your own baptism. So you could break out the photo albums and look at pictures, or if you still have your baptismal candle, you can light it. Yeah, I still have Kate's candle, so I'm going to show it to you. We only light it for like two seconds every year because we want it to last, but it's just a really cool reminder of the big day. And last night when I was teaching my class, I asked the kids how many of them remembered their own baptism or had seen pictures of it. And so many of them just had no idea. So if you have kids, it's good to talk to them about it. You can show them different things from their baptism. Here is little baby Kate's hat that she wore when she was baptized with this cute little white sweater. In our family, we have one baptismal gown that something like 50 kids have worn at this point. So it's handed from person to person. Currently it is with a family who is still having babies. So it is not at our house, but I do still have these two things. And I also have the white garment of purity that was put on Kate when she was baptized. So she's really excited about this walk down memory lane. Another thing that you can do to celebrate is to renew your baptismal vows by reciting the Apostles' Creed. So we'll have a link down to the creed in the description box. And if you want to get really creative, you can try making this tasty treat called Christ's Diapers. <laughs> we found the recipe for it in this cookbook, A Continual Feast. And in Greek, the word diples, which kind of sounds like diapers, means folds. So the pastry dough can be folded in a way to remind you of a diaper. Well, this is a traditional Christmas food, and so swaddling clothes would have included diapers. So there is a connection there. And if you were baptized as an infant, you were also probably wearing diapers. So there's that connection there somehow. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting to think about it. But anyway, they do sound delicious. You fold them and fry them, and then you put nuts and honey and powdered sugar on top. So, you know, what's not to like about that? And if we uh, try making these, we'll definitely let you know. Yeah, we're not much one for frying things here, but you know, be fun. it sounds really <laughs> delicious, kind of like baklava, but different. Anyway, we hope that you have a very wonderful and blessed feast of the baptism of the Lord. Thank you so much for watching today, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.